Hello, welcome to Paleo Greenbird. I am Greenbird, and welcome to part two of flint napping tool making, how to make a copper bopper. So these are the lead heads that we made in the last series. Just kind of give you an idea of what they look like. No different than they did before, but they're about a little over half to three quarters the way full of lead. Some of them a little bit more than others. This one, it didn't stick very well. The lead slides and sliding around. It's because even though I scraped them up, I really should have flexed them, but that's all right. Probably won't make a big deal. Um, so I've got a set of six. Six large ones and six small ones. So I think the large ones were one and a half inch if I remember right. And then um, the small ones are one inch. Um, then I've got some three quarters inch that sometimes I make two, but they're a little bit too small unless you really want to do fine work. So here I've made up some wooden handles for these. Real easy, nothing special. All I did was take uh, some wooden dowels that are that coordinate with or correlate rather with the diameter of these copper caps so one and a half inch and one inch and I've sanded them down really well I hand carved the the bases to round them off a little bit you can use power tools if you want to I just chose not to and now we're gonna attach the copper caps to the handles so we get some boppers all right stay tuned Hi guys, welcome back to part two. <coughs> Paleo Greenbird here, and um, we're going to be attaching the copper tops or the copper caps, rather, to the billet handles. And um, it's really important that you sand these down really well. You want to make sure that you have, that the surface will really adhere and, and take to the glue that you're putting on there. I prefer to use E6000. Can't really say what it says, but it says E6000. I just like the way that it. Uh, it, it's kind of when it hardens it has a sort of a rubbery type of feel to it um, it doesn't expand like some of the other glues um, I've used Gorilla Glue I've used liquid nails uh, they all work but I find that the E6000 for me anyway um, just works the best so I have some tissues here because it does get messy you really don't want this on your skin if you don't have to you can wear gloves if you want to, but we're just going to do this. So we've got three large billets, three small billets. I'll take those out of frame just for a minute so I have more room to work with. <coughs> and we're going to make uh, one, of the large, one of the large billets first. So what I like to do is just take my lead. This one didn't stick very well. I had, you notice I had to push it back in. I probably should have used some flux, but whatever. Not a big deal. It's still going to work. enough in there to cover the bottom. I don't mind if a little bit comes out of the edges. At least that way you know it's getting in there. Stuff is kind of thick. There we go. So, Because it's so thick I don't always just make sure it's all around it. I just put a good blob in there like that. That's enough. Once I put this billet in there, twist around a little bit. It's going to not only adhere, but it's going to probably come out the sides a little bit. Nice and tight. All right, so that's in there good. And once I have them in there good like this, what I'll do is I'll try and store them upright. In this particular situation, I'm just going to use a, a small flat rate shipping box. So let's try the next one. We're going to do another large one. In fact, you know what? Let's just do a small one. Just in case I run out of glue. Make sure I have an even set. So I'm going to make sure that the lead's down there. Again, you know, that's kind of a, a fail on my part. The lead should be stuck in there, but it's not. So we're going to deal with what we have. Same thing. I'm going to put a little bit more in. I didn't really get anything coming out of the edges last time. I kind of do like to have it come out a little bit, even though it requires some cleanup. All right, that's that's enough. That's probably too much. Same thing. I'm going to put the billet in there, the handle, rather. Push it in as tight as I can. 
Yeah, and I have some coming out the, the other side. Just a little bit coming out on the edge, as you can see. That's perfect. That's enough to where you know you have enough in there. It doesn't create so much of a mess that you have a ton of cleanup work to do. And you could actually have a Q-tip handy that you use to get that remaining glue off of, but I don't. So I'll use this toothpick. All right. So there's a small billet. Put that again. I showed you that the wrong way last time. You want the, the lead part on the top when you put these in, because you want that weight going down under the handle. All right, on to the next one. Same thing. Put the glue in. Nice, good, generous amount. Love this E6000. I love the way it dries. Almost like, I don't know, what was that glue, that rubber cement stuff when you were a kid in school? It's kind of like what, the, what it feels like when it dries. So we've got a good generous amount in there. Pop it in there, push it tight. Yep, that's coming out the edges. So I'm cleaning it up real quick. Now one thing you want to do too when you're when you're uh, putting the copper tops on there is make sure it's seated so it's flat because it, you, you can see probably on this maybe you can maybe you can't it's got it's a, a little bit of an angle so I'm just going to take that readjust it I mean you want to cut your billets as flat as you can so when they receive the copper tops they're flush but sometimes there's a little bit of variance there you can't always get it perfect I just got this stuff on my hands, so I'm doomed. Clean it up a little bit, make it look good. There we go, that looks good. And when you're cleaning it up, I know I have a tissue here that I've been using, but honestly, you're better off using paper. For obvious reasons, you probably already know that. It just, it won't make a big huge mess like a tissue will. It won't stick to it. Alright, so there we go. Now we've got the next one. You know, this camera angle is not very friendly, is it? I need a camera person, don't I? Still trying to line it up. Make sure it's perfect because it will make a difference when you go to make your strikes. If it's not straight, it's just not going to feel right. All right. A bit more cleanup. It's okay if there's a little bit of glue. I don't really care about that, but it just depends on how clean and fancy you want them to look. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna make sure that it's straight. I'm gonna put it in the box. I can already tell that this yeah, is not really super even, so I have to just work with it best I can. One thing about this E6000 is once you start to use it, when you set it down, for whatever reason, it still wants to continue to come out of the tube. It doesn't want to stop. So I always have like a little paper plate. 
Got to set it on while I'm finishing my project. This was the perfect amount. Not as much came out as last time, but just enough coming out of the edges to where you know you've got as much glue in there as you can. That's the perfect amount. See how there's no cleanup even needed? You can see the edge there. I'm not sure if you can see that. You just barely see that there's some glue coming out. Once it's where you want it, and then it's just rinse and repeat. Same thing. I need some more glue. I'm getting low. So it's a real easy way to make copper boppers. You know, and one of these boppers will last you forever. You know, you might need to refurbish it from time to time. You might need, you know, you might actually even knock the head off of it when you're using it, uh, especially in the beginning. Um, not a big deal. Just put it back on. Um, you might wear out the copper cap eventually. Uh, that takes a long time to do that. A lot of napping to wear out the copper cap. In which case, generally at that point, you just want to make a new bopper. I mean, I don't know, maybe you could put the same lead into a new cap. I've never tried that just because, I don't know, when it gets to that point, I just assume I'm going to make a new bopper. Okay, so I got a little bit coming out of there, so I'm going to rip off a little more paper. But again, not a lot coming out, just that one spot. You know, as you make these, you'll start to get an idea of like when something happens, you'll be like, oh, that's going to give me trouble in the future, or oh, that's no big deal. And they're so cheap to make by yourself that, you know, once, once you start making a lot of them, a lot of times I don't even pay a lot of attention. I've got four or five of these kicking around, and if I happen to knock the top off of one, I just break out another one. Not a big deal. So there we go. There's another large one. These ones I'm trying to be a little bit more careful of on these ones because I'm taking these to a show that I'm going to in June. I'll be selling them. So I want them to hold up for the people who, who buy them, especially since most likely the people that will be buying them will be people that are new to napping and just want to give it a try. Don't want them to be discouraged by faulty tools. So I put a little bit extra care into these. And I sell these cheap. I don't charge a lot for these. I do it mostly for fun. If I can have fun doing it, I can get somebody hooked on flint napping. Maybe I can pay for my supplies and get a bopper or two out of it for myself for free. I'm happy. You're probably never going to make a living as a flint napper. Well, you could, I suppose. You can do anything you want if you put your mind to it. All right, so I'm going to put the cap on this so it doesn't keep oozing out. I've got this all over my hands, which is a terrible idea because this stuff takes forever to come off your hands. It's like super glue. It's like any other glue, though. If you just roll it off while it's still relatively tacky, you can get it out there. So my glue back into a zip, into a little plastic bag. Finish off this last bopper. Oh yeah. A lot there. That's why I'm using a tissue. Just a little extra on this one. I don't mind if there's a little bit of a glue line on the bottom. It's not not a big deal. I mean, you don't want it to be really, really blatantly obvious, but if there's a little bit of a glue line, it's not a big deal. And 
there we go. Here's our last bopper. It's our small bopper. So we just made three copper boppers in, oh, I don't know, what was it, maybe an hour at the most? A couple hours, I guess. Most of that's waiting for the lead to heat up and melt. And then the end process is real quick. So you can make, you know, I would suggest whenever you're making those lead caps, make like a dozen of them at a time. Um, if you make a dozen of them, that's probably more than you'll need in your, I don't know, not your entire life, but that, that'll probably last you decades unless you're selling them. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any advice for me, anything you think I could do differently or anything that you've done that's worked well for you, please let me know in the comments. I always love to hear from you. Please share, please subscribe, please like, and um, most importantly, please have a fantastic day because this is Paleo Greenbird and I'm signing out.